and we're adding on uh, another building or an addition to this building on the back so that we can have some bedrooms and so on. We had one tree that was leaning up over the cabin and uh, had to be taken down kind of piece by piece so it took me back to my early days. I started my career actually as an arborist. Record breaker. So we went to the boathouse and we found the right size wrench, I think. So it should probably work. Too bloody big, so let's go get another one. Mr. Fail Handyman. The first step was to scrape off as much old paint as possible. Ooh. That works perfect. It's awesome. And it just died. Welcome to another episode of The Epic Family Road Trip. This is the second episode of our little mini-series about the Epic Family Road Trip living off the grid. In this episode, we do a lot of work around the property, around the cabin, just prepping it for living here full time. Over the last 12 years or so we've been coming up here but just really for a weekend at a time sometimes we'd, we'd stretch it as long as a week so it's a little different when you're living here full time there's a lot more requirements so we've been spending a lot of time just putting in some things like water and electricity and so on step one is to preserve the existing logs that were built way back in the 40s and have been standing there for a long time and that all started with prepping the logs for painting the first step was to scrape off as much old paint as possible so that we could put on a layer of good quality primer before painting it several times. It was really needed after so many years, but we wanted to keep it at the traditional color, which was brown with the red roof. So we're really excited to get the red roof so it'll complete the whole look of the old uh, 40s look and feel. Maybe a bit.
The next step was to get internet here. Now there's, we're off the grid, there's no wires of any kind coming to the island. We generate our power uh, remotely, but there is such a thing as satellite internet nowadays and that's awesome. Um, we typically didn't like having internet. In fact, when we came up here on weekends, we, one of the things that we uh, really liked about this place is there's no cell service and there's no internet because usually that's a distraction. But when we're living here full time, we have no choice. Nowadays, we conduct our school online. Uh, my business, I do my coaching on uh, web conferencing. Uh, we upload our videos. Uh, we didn't have internet last weekend and we had to drive two hours or more to get into a cellular connection so that we could upload the video. So now we can hopefully do it from here. Um, so that was a real bonus, getting Wi-Fi set up. Thankfully they have such a thing as internet over uh, satellite connection. So that was the next step. Next we set up a do-it-yourself very cost-effective home remedy water system. Now we were bringing buckets from the lake to the house back and forth and we thought enough of that we got to get creative so check, what, check out what we came up with. I think for a few bucks you can set up something similar at your cabin. When we finish the addition to the cabin we're gonna have a more permanent water supply there but for now this is what we've come up with. It is a great do-it-yourself cost-effective um, but temporary uh, water system. Let me show you what we got. So we just got a simple submersible water pump. It's about 70 bucks. Uh, we got a couple of hoses which connect up to uh, where we want the water to go and an extension cord. And all you do is put this in under the water, connect it to the extension cord and it runs running water at pretty good pressure. Everything is uh, about 100 bucks, so it's a super cheap, good way to do it. So where we put it, there's a rock ledge, so it keeps it out of the dirt and gravel and things, so it's not picking it up and putting it through the water system, which would break the pump. Um, but what some people do, if you don't have that rock ledge, you can put it in like a plastic tote, so it's not sitting with the dirt, and it's still sucking up water, or a bucket, um, which keeps it above the dirt. So then we're not looking at the hose sitting out in the open. Uh, we're going to bury it with uh, dirt and needles, so we don't see it. Okay, now we're just hooking up the hose to our already existing shower and shower head. Uh, you, if you don't have one already, you could uh, just use a garden hose and hook it up there. Works perfect. It's awesome. And it just died. <laughs> what we also did is we put a hose splitter on here so we can have multiple different water sources so we can have it running to the uh, shower or to a tap in the kitchen. Now about once a week we head into town, uh, which is a couple hours drive, in order to get supplies and parts. And we really need to be thoughtful about that because if you forget something, it's not that easy to go back. If you think about it, it's almost a, at least a half a day's work just to go in and get things. So um, in we went, but on the way we had a breakdown with the lower end of our outboard motor on our boat. And that's not good when you live on an island, you have one way to get in and out. And if it breaks down, you either have a very long swim or you fix it. And so we were able to get a hold of uh, the marina and thankfully they came and brought us a replacement motor. And then we went into town to get our motor fixed. Now they are backlogged because this time of year, so it take a couple of weeks before they can look at it. So thankfully in the meantime, we have a, a loaner motor so we can get to and from the island. We do have another boat, but it's still stored down south and hopefully we get that up here in the next uh, week or so because it's important to have a backup. Hold up the engine. Hold it all the way back. Um, now that I got those two little bolts off, hold that up. I got those two little bolts off. I've just got to uh, take out the whole bolt now. 
we'll put a part of the bolt while someone holds the stock. So now it's loose and now it moves all over the place. So we went to the boathouse and we found the right size wrench, I think. So it should probably work. It's too bloody big, so let's go get another one. Mr. Fail Handyman. So after like four failed attempts, I finally found the right wrench. So we're just gonna loosen all these bolts off and then take the whole thing off and put that new one on. So this morning we had uh, the bottom end of our Mercury motor uh, just started smoking in the water. I guess it's called a impeller that brings in water and it stopped working. So um, Paul from the Marina brought his boat over and and picked us up so uh, we wouldn't be stranded here. Now the boys are taking the motor off. We're going to take it into Mercury to get fixed. And in the meantime, uh, Paul from the Marina also lent us that Honda there. And hopefully we can get that installed on the boat so we're not uh, swimming back to uh, the mainland. Grab that. town you got to make good use of it and what we did is we dropped the kids off to watch a movie and then while they're watching the movie me and Carol went and did laundry we went shopping we went and bought a barbecue and got all the groceries before picking them up and heading back to the lake hey, we just uh, carried this heavy motor into the motorhome it's the one that went down yesterday the bottom end impeller stopped working so plan is uh, we'll transport it up to Legend Boats and um, get it repaired hopefully. In the meantime we're borrowing a boat from the marina but uh, yeah we'll see how this goes and we'll let you know. Part of living on an island you can't do without your boat. talk to a salesperson and see if, uh, well they, they can repair it, but they said it's a minimum of two weeks, which is not good. So I'm gonna look at what it would cost to buy a new one and trade this in. Because it is getting a bit old and reliability, as we're finding out, living on an island is, reliability is everything, unless you have always a backup boat, which uh, we don't at the moment. So yeah, we'll, let's go see how much these things are. I would guess, Three to four thousand dollars probably for a, another 25 horse but we'll, we'll find out got this new barbecue some more paint something every day something new every day something new and exciting Hopefully, uh, yeah, everything wears out eventually and our old barbecue wore out. It was just a cheapo, one of those $149 ones. I think it lasted two seasons, but now that we're up there full time, it's a different story, you know what I mean? 
doing a lot more usage. Yeah, so we got a good quality Napoleon barbecue. Now we're going to pick up the kids. They were out uh, watching a movie. What was it called? Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, whatever. I think they'll enjoy that. How was the movie, guys? Oh, ridiculously good, actually. It's definitely the best Jurassic World or park that came out. How was it? Awesome. Big good dinosaur? Barbecue. Yep. Good dinosaurs? Oh, that was such a good movie. Yeah. It was so awesome. Barbecue tank holder. Yeah, it looks like it. These two things and whatever those. All right, let me find the instructions. Okay, so step one is get the wheels on, which we're doing now. Step two is put the sides on, and you need six bolts currently. Would be these. There's six bolts and a tool that comes with it. And then these nine bolt, nine screws for the uh, side walls. job on the painting. What I'm going to show you now is another uh, kind of do-it-yourself or quick and easy cost-effective uh, tip. We are going to be putting in a more permanent solar battery system uh, when the addition is done in the house but in the meantime if you're looking for something that you can do yourself what we have is a solar panel and it's the same solar panel system we use when we're overlanding it's made by overland solar but you can buy you know just a simple panel anywhere then there's a regulator that needs to go on it it's built into our panel so uh, that charges up the batteries what i got is a, a slow crank uh, deep cycle boat battery and uh, 12 volt deal and so I just attach the solar panel to the battery. Now the battery's inside here. And then the next step is to get an inverter. Uh, Cost-wise, this is about $100, $120 Canadian on sale. The battery's about $120 as well. And the solar panel's uh, a couple hundred dollars there. And then um, you just put on, and then I bought these cables for 10 bucks each, and they just connect this to the battery. And this inverter, what it does is convert 12 volt battery power to regular 120. So we can plug in our uh, internal, you know, 120 appliances and things like that. What we have is, uh, yeah, TV, DVD player, that kind of stuff. We can charge. Uh, we also have a bit of a 12 volt system already wired in here. And that's a very simple system as well. So if you look over here, we've got a panel with just a couple of um, fuses and then just regular RV 12 volt wire. 
and that wire just runs around to a little electric RV light. So that's how it works. Now let me just show you and I'll set it up real quick. You can mark them positive or negative so you don't make a mistake. There's different lengths of wires as well, but um, I didn't need a lot of space, so there you have it. So this little um, 12 volt system, basically you just clip it on, negative, positive, and it runs up. So now we've got this little 12 volt uh, RV light and boom it's running off the battery and the solar panels charging up that battery so very very simple now i'll show you how to get it to uh, 120 for bigger appliances whoa she works <laughs> we got power Okay, so now we've got the inverter hooked up. We just ran positive to positive, negative to negative. And now we can go ahead and plug something in. So I'm gonna use this extension cord just now to demonstrate, but um, let's show how it works. So you turn it on here, and it's got a nice gauge to show you how the battery's doing. And I've got, I haven't got the solar hooked up yet, but this is um, like onto the battery yet, but this is the system we have. Um, you can also permanently put it on, so. Negative on negative, positive on positive. So now the battery's being solar charged. Now you just go ahead and plug in an appliance. So now you just plug in and you got power. So very simple, um, it's a few moving parts but uh, not that expensive and you, you've got yourself some nice uh, solar power. And uh, like I said, you can run the TV, DVD, quite a few things. I'm sure we haven't tested it too thoroughly, but I'm sure at some point, you know, you, you can overload the system, so you've got to, got to be careful. The only other way to uh, get more power, I think, would be to get two uh, six volt, large six volt uh, deep cycle batteries that they use in golf carts and cross them together. You'll still get 12 volt, but I think it'll last a little longer. But in this case, with that powerful solar panel and that battery, I think we're in really good shape. So free power, you don't have to run a generator and waste gas. So what we're using here is a portable solar panel made by Overland Solar. This is something we can pack up and take on the Jeep. In fact, it's three panels. I'll flip it around so you can see the back end of it. And it's got these handy stands, which you just pop down. It's got the controller here um, it's all built into it and, and then a long cable. And like I said, this just folds up into a very small package and we take it wherever we go. We're gonna obviously go with a more permanent setup later, but this for now is very, very handy, uh, especially if we're up at the cottage. We can just move it around with the sun as well. So the sun is from this direction right now. And so we'll just set it up right here. It works wonderfully. This week was mostly working, setting up, getting things ready, but you know what, it was cooler when we got here. And so thankfully we did all the, a lot of that work in the cool because man, it is summertime now. It is really getting warm. It's in the 30s Celsius, the high 80s Fahrenheit, and it's only gonna get warmer. So we didn't have much time for swimming and doing water sports, but we did get out on the paddle boards a little bit, which was a lot of fun. Three, two, one, go. Not bad. Thank you to our 17,000, we just hit 17,000 today, subscribers. Um, it's awesome to have you guys on board and thank you for all your love and support. Um, happy Canada Day to all the Canadians that uh, watch our show and uh, that's coming up this weekend. And as you may not know, my better half is American. All of us were half Canadian and half American. And uh, to all our American fans and friends and everybody down there, family, uh, happy 4th of July. We celebrate both and because July 1st is Canada Day and the 4th of July is the 4th of July, you probably figured that out. 
uh, we celebrate both and it's a lot of fun and a lot of fireworks go off and we have a really great time and I hope you all have a wonderful long weekend as well. We hope you enjoyed this week's video. Stay tuned for next week as we come with episode three of our mini series of the Epic Family Road Trip Living Off the Grid. And in the meantime, we'll, we'll see you down the road. road.